Hello fellow VSFers! In this tutorial you will learn the very basics of View Storefront 2 project. So we will take a look at the project structure and we will go through each meaningful section or area of the project. So we will dive deeper into pages, components, layouts and many many more. If you look at our View Storefront 2 documentation in the concept section here, the first page you will see is the project structure. So in here, you have a written version of what we will be going through today in the video. In terms of the View Storefront 2 project structure, keep in mind that View Storefront under the hood uses Next.js. So almost all pages, components, layouts, or other configuration files are part of the Nux.js. So if you are keen on learning more on that, make sure to visit Nux.js documentation as well. Let's go to the code and see our project. I have generated this ViewStorefront2 application, which is integrated already with BigCommerce. Going from the top, we see the .nux folder. This is the generated Nux project, which was created by Nux for us from our files here. Make sure to not modify directly because it can make your project not work as expected. This is like the generated output of Nux. We are not touching this section. Going further, we have the components folder. And if we expand it, we see that we have a lot of components here. We have the footer, header, navigation, sidebar. If we take a look at app footer, for example, and scroll to the top, let's just close this part so that it's better visible. In the template section of our app footer component, we see this SF footer and more components like SF footer column or SF list. SF stands for store front and in particular, Storefront UI. Storefront UI is a UI components library built specifically for e-commerce. So if we scroll down to our script section of our component here, we will see that all those components were imported directly from Storefront UI slash view package. If you want to learn more about Storefront UI, there is a very good documentation website called docs.storefrontui.io where you can check components, molecules, organisms because Storefront UI uses the atomic design. So it has components that are divided by their complexity. So atoms are the most basic ones like buttons, inputs, labels. Molecules, organisms are more advanced. If we take a look at the button, for example, here, we will see all the available props this component accepts. And not only prop props, but also slots and events. If we go to canvas here, we can also play around with it. So we can, for example, make this button up here disabled, or we can change its type and we can also change the color to secondary. Let's go back to the code. So we now know that View Storefront uses Stormfront UI under the hood, but it also comes with several other components, like for example here, channel selector. If we close up the components, the next folder is composables. Composables are the functions that powers your View Storefront 2 application with the data from certain integration. So for example, from e-commerce platform or content management system or payment gateway. If we expand the use product and we check the index.ts file, we will see here that we have this function use product. And each composable will have a very similar structure. It will have the method that will be used to fetch the data and will have the loading property that will tell you whether the loading of this search method is um, 
true. So we know that the request wasn't fetched yet. It is pending and also an error object. So we will know that there was an error while we tried to search for the product. And as a return of the search method, we will get from our big commerce API, the data about the product. Hey, hey, Jakub from the future here. If you'd like to learn more about the context like this dollar big commerce here, make sure to check out our documentation and specifically concepts. And in here you will have application context. By reading these docs, you will understand the structure of the context and how to access it across your application. Keep in mind that basing on your project, this composables folder might be less or more populated. And what I mean by that is that in some ViewSurfant 2 applications, composables are placed here in your theme, in your final project. But in others, you might notice that composables are part of the NPM package, but they will work the same way. Some projects might have helpers that, as the name suggests, are global functions that are used to um, get some data or transform some data into another form. So we will not be taking a look at that because this is like the commerce, e-commerce platform related stuff. If you go to Lang, we will see our IATN uh, configuration for different languages. In here we have EN for English and DE for German. In the video uh, that will be linked in this video description, you will see how to in work with IATN so that you can add your custom language here as well. Next, we will go to layouts. Layouts are the first wrapper component around certain, uh, around your application. So if we go and take a look at the default view, this is how our usual view store from the application will look like. So we will have the top bar and we will have the app header. And just below that, we will have here the next. So this will be the content of our certain page. So for example, the product page or the component uh, product home page or category page, checkout page, this will be embedded here. And we also have other components like card sidebar, wishlist sidebar, login model, for example, or the notification. We might and basing, based on different e-commerce integrations, you might have more or less layouts. In some ViewStore from two applications, you might have, for example, also the My Account layout, which might look a bit different than the default one. We also have the Checkout, which can look a bit different, and obviously the Error one, that looks completely different to let, to let user know that something was, went, went wrong and he probably needs to go to the homepage or somewhere else. Next, we have the middleware. So middlewares are the functions that are triggered on each root change. So for example, if we have this is authenticated middleware, it can be a global one that will check whether our user is logged in or not. If not, we can redirect the user to homepage. So in this particular case, the is authenticated middleware will probably be placed in the section or in the page where the user should be already logged in. So for example, my account, my account. Hey, hey, Jakob here once again. If you'd like to see the usage of this is authenticated middleware, you can go to pages and my account here. And in here, you will see the usage of this is authenticated middleware. If you'd like to learn more about Next middlewares, make sure to check out this website by Next. Next, we have pages. Pages are those pages <laughs> where the certain logic for each um, individual part of your e-commerce platform is. So we have the home page, we have the product page, 
we have category page, checkout page. So let's take a look at the home page. In home page, we will have more Storefront UI components like SF Hero. We have the SF banner, SF banner grid as well. And the logic for fetching the data, because if we expand the script tag here and we will go to here, we will have those composables. So for example, use product that we discussed earlier. By using use fetch or in some view storefront applications on SSR, we are fetching the data about the products on the server side rather than on the client side, on the initial load of the application. But don't be afraid, it will still work on the client navigation. So for example, if you go through from home page to category page, use fetch will trigger the request even on the front end. This is basically for initial load of certain page that it will be triggered on the server side. In plugins, some ViewStefan 2 applications like this one might have the in integration plugin for certain e-commerce platform or content management system. So in here we have the big commerce. So, so this integration config will allow us to get access to the big commerce integration from our pages, layouts, or components. For example, if we inspect the pages here, we will see, or the composable instead, we will get the big commerce from the use context. In the static folder, you will have all those uh, images, icons, and uh, other static content that your, you will be served from your website. Some View Storefront 2 applications might also have stores folder. Stores will contain the files that each of them will be a Pina store. So this is a recent development in View Storefront to use Pina. Pina is an alternative for Vuex. If you know uh, Vue 2, you will know that there was, a case, there was a tool called Vuex that was this global store. So Pina is something very similar, but uh, with the new functionality. So some of the ViewStorefront 2 projects might have those stores here that you will also be using to store the data and fetch the data as well. In the tests, you will have the end-to-end -end tests for your application and also unit tests. And the types is just the type script declaration. If we go to the .env or .env example, you will see the environment variables that are required for this certain project to work correctly. And all these environment variables are used then later in both middleware config.js and Nux config.js files here. So let's inspect them right now. If we take a look at middleware config.js file, we will see this uh, regular structure of integrations object. In the integrations object, we will have the big commerce and in here we can also have other integrations. So if you are interested in learning more about building your custom integration or integrating other um, content management systems or e-commerce platforms, you can check out the video that will also be linked in the documentation and in the uh, video description. So this file will contain the configuration for your e-commerce platform and other integrations as well. And in here we, he we see those environment variables from the .env file. We also have the middleware.js file, which is also a recent development of Vue Storefront 2, because we initially we had this middleware as a part of a Nux application. But in some cases, it might be better to have this middleware as a separate application, like a separate server. So in this middleware.js file, you will find the configuration for the middleware. Hey, hey. Jakub here one last time. There might be several reasons for separating the middleware from your Vue Storefront 2 application. 
for example, scalability, security, or performance. So in order to learn more about this concept, make sure to check out our docs and specifically concepts and server middleware here. If you scroll down to the bottom of this page after reading all about the middleware itself, you will see this section about separating server middleware from Nux.js. In the nux.config.js file, this is the configuration file for Nux. So in here, we will have the configuration for the server of our application, the global head, so the title, meta, links. We will have the plugins, which uh, we discussed earlier, just the declaration of them, registration, sorry. We will have the build modules and the modules as well. So in here, we will have all those modules that are used in our application. So we will have the Pina, we will have the Composition API, PWA, and of course, View Storefront here, and also View Storefront here for the HTTP cache, which is also used in this application. And we also have the IATN, the cookies configuration, and other modules here as well. Apart from that, in the router, we will have the uh, logic for scroll behavior, how we want it to work in our application and also extend routes. So Nux by default has a folder based or a file based routing, which means that if you have a page and you have home or index in it, it will be automatically mapped to slash. But in this case, we want to make it a bit more advanced. So we created those routes by ourselves. So we will have the logic for product, for example, because in here we have both ID and Slack and we have category, which might have several Slacks and so on and so on. In here we have IATN configuration. For some projects, you might find this IATN configuration in a separate file, but usually it will be here or imported here. Instructions on how to work with this IATN object are part of the custom language video. In here, we also have the PWA uh, support and the configuration. Style resources. So we are fetching, we are using S, uh, SAS and SCSS preprocessor for parsing or for processing the storefront UI styles. In public runtime config, we have uh, environment variables for the theme, storefronts, and the middleware URL. So if we are using the separate middleware, we can um, register it right here. And also some build configuration right here. So that will be it. Let us know in the comments what next topics you would, you would like us to cover for the next videos so that we can explain each of them in a separate video.